Healing in Hearthstone is actually somewhat valuable compared to other card games. So in this video, we're looking at the 10 best healing cards of all time. And at number 10, we have the Antique Heal Bot. This card is a neutral 5 mana 3-3 that heals your hero for 8 health. And for a long time, this card was run in a ton of control decks, just because it was the only decent healing option that all classes could use. You see, pretty much the only neutral healing minions either didn't restore that much health, or were really inefficient at what they did. So when Healbot came out in one of the first expansions, classes that had almost no good healing cards, like Rogue and Mage, immediately started using it solely for massive healing. It also helped that Antique Healbot really wasn't even that understated, since it was basically a 2 mana 3-3 with a healing touch staple to it. And unlike in some other card games, restoring health to your hero has actually been a pretty good effect to have on minions, since it can sometimes shut down aggro in combo decks. You see, the best type of aggro decks don't actually focus on outputting as much damage as possible, but on outputting exactly 30 damage as quickly as possible. As a result, aggro decks rarely run extra card draw, and rely pretty much on their opening hand and any drawn burn damage to help them finish out the game. And that's why Antique Heal Bot was so good. Since you could run two of them, you could gain up to 16 health, putting you out of range of a lot of early aggro decks before they ran out of steam. This also let Warlocks and Rogues begin to use their health more as a resource, either by life tapping or attacking with a hero more often, since they knew that if they got low, they could always heal bot. This card doesn't see any play anymore though, even for its mech tag, just because it's become too slow and sadly doesn't offer enough healing. But, at least in the early days of Hearthstone, Antique Killbot single-handedly made control and combo decks much more viable against aggro decks, which is why it deserves a number 10 spot. And at number 9, we have Spirit Lash. This 2 mana pre-spell deals 1 damage to all minions and restores health to your hero equal to the amount of damage it dealt. Despite looking simple, this card was a must-run priest during the age of aggressive pirate warriors. Before Priest got all the amazing aggro tools that they have today, Priest has pretty much been the punching bag of all aggro decks, because they had almost no early game board clears. Before Spirit Lash, their only options were to run cheap single target removal, or hero power until turn 4. As mentioned, aggro decks have been very powerful throughout Hearthstone's history, so it's always been a struggle for control and combo decks to try and stay alive long enough to stabilize. Spirit Lash did help a lot at slowing down games enough, to the point where priests could actually play the game. By far the most common play to see before Spirit Lash was released was to play a pirate on one and pull patches out from the deck. Spirit Lash, which dealt exactly one damage, would kill any turn one pirates, heal for a slight amount, and slow down pirate warriors just enough so priests could stabilize in the middle game. It also helped to patch one of priests' main weaknesses at the time, many low health minions. Before Holy Nova was buffed to 4 mana, this was pretty much their only option if they wanted to kill a board of 1 health minions. With Spirit Lash, priests were easily able to deal with any swarm decks while still healing off of it. And as an extra bonus, Spirit Lash, when played with Blood Mage Thalnus, would deal 2 damage to all minions, draw a card, and pretty much heal your hero to full. And even though it's still occasionally played, even in today's meta, most early game minions have more than 2 health, making it a lot less potent than it used to be. Still. Its ability to heal for up to 14 health against a full board for 2 mana, even if it didn't kill anything, is valuable enough that modern Reno and Big Priest run this OG removal spell. And at number 8, we have Mistress of Mixtures. This neutral 1 mana minion is a 2-2 two -two that heals both heroes for 4 health when it dies. This was another very important anti-aggro minion that a ton of decks used for a long time. The two overwhelming benefits of this card are that it's overstatted for 1 drop and restores 4 health to your hero when it dies. Oftentimes, this minion alone can kill two of your opponent's one drops and heal your hero for four health, all for just one mana. This card was immediately picked up when it was printed and saw tons of competitive play. It's hard to overstate how important healing and board clears have just been because of how good aggro decks have been in Hearthstone. Combo and control decks at times have had a majority of their decks dedicated to anti-aggro cards, with a small portion of their deck actually dedicated to their win condition. This card was the bane of aggro decks, since, as a 1 mana 2 2, which was unheard of at the time, it could easily contest the board and shut down aggro decks. Its effect was also almost always a purely positive, since restoring health to your full health aggro opponent didn't do anything. The strategy for most non aggro decks was actually to just stay alive long enough for aggro decks to run out of steam and then slowly turn the tides and win. Mistress of Mixtures fit perfectly into this game plan since it slowed down some aggro decks so much that it became almost unwinnable. This card saw play in a numerable amount of decks, but is mostly associated with Reno Priest and Cube Warlocks, 
who both loved the healing and early tempo it gave. This card is actually quite similar to Zombie Chow, another one overstated one drop, since they both restore health to your opponent and were used heavily as anti-aggro tools when they first came out. But, one of the main issues Mistress of Mixtures has is that its healing isn't immediate, but triggers when it dies. So, if you're at full health, you waste its effect since your hero's maximum health is 30. Or, if you need the healing immediately, you're out of luck. And as of now, Armor Vendor has replaced Mistress as the new one drop of choice since it fixes both of these issues by giving your hero armor as soon as you play it. But, since it gives armor and doesn't heal, she isn't included on this list. And at number 7, we have Zeliax. This neutral legendary is a 5 mana 3-2 with a whole mess of keywords. Basically, this card can attack enemies as soon as it's played, ignores the first amount of damage it takes, heals your hero for how much damage it does, forces your opponent to attack into it, and can add its stats and effects to another mech minion. In practice, Zilliax is mainly used to deal 3 damage, heal for 3, and be a 3-2 with lifesteal. And because of all of its bundled effects, Zilliax was at one point the most played legendary in standard and wild. What makes this card really unique though, is being able to use it in different ways to utilize all of its keywords. For example, when played on an empty board, Zilliax is a 3-2 with taunt, a divine shield, and lifesteal, and can effectively lock out minions from damaging you. Or you could play it with a mech to give it rush and all of Zilliax's keywords. But as mentioned, what really made Zilliax so efficient was its ability to deal 3 damage, heal for 6, and be a must-kill target for any aggro deck. This anti-aggro effect was decent enough that it saw a ton of play in standard in just about every deck, some control decks in wild, and most notably, Big Priest, which wanted to cheat out a 5-5 version of Zilliax's Blood of Gahoon. Unfortunately though, being a jack of all trades and master of none means that Zilliax's power alone hasn't founded a competitive home as of now. Almost every deck has more synergistic cards it wants to run over Zilliax, even if it is an individually strong card. And at number 6, we have Blood Reaver Gul'dan. This 10 mana hero card resummoned every friendly demon that died this game, gave you 5 armor, and changed your hero power to Siphon Life, which is a 2 mana hero power that lets you deal 3 damage and heal your hero for 3. This card has single-handedly changed how Warlocks build their decks because of how much value you get off of this card. You see, this card actually wasn't all that great when it came out, simply because there were no big demons in rotation. But after a couple of expansions, this card terrorized the meta and spawned one of the cheatiest decks of all time, Cube Lock. This deck, with a wave of big demon support, was able to bring out Doomguard and Voidlord for 5 mana by using Possessed Lackey and Skull Minari, created multiple copies of them, and resummoned multiple Doomguards and Voidlords with Gul'dan. In fact, Cube Lock was so good at either creating giant walls of taunts or multiple charging Doomguards that it saw competitive play in Wild for a while, and with the addition of Malganus and Enhanced Dreadlords, you could resummon them multiple times per game. This card, along with the original Nazoth, were the ultimate late game cards and actually saw play alongside each other since Voidlord and Dreadlord are both great death rattle demons. All of this to say, Gul'dan's Battlecrime was one of the best in the game, and he became an equally amazing hero power. Not only could it cast Dark Bomb every turn, but you can also heal for 3 as well, which would almost always get value since Warlocks try to life tap as much as possible. It should say something that Gul'dan is one of the only 10 mana cards that has ever been played competitively, considering how strong aggro is nowadays. And speaking of good Warlock cards... And at number 5, we have Spice Bread Baker, which is a neutral 4 mana 3-2 minion that restores health to your hero equal to the number of cards you have in your hand. This card was printed in a new wave of handlock support cards and pretty much immediately started seeing play. Back in the early days of Hearthstone, one of the best OG decks was Handlock. Basically, it would abuse the Warlock hero power of Life Tap to consistently gain life points to get a whole bunch of cards in hand, which would synergize with Mountain Giant, a 12 mana 8 a that cost 1 mana less for each other card in your hand. And because Handlock would be drawing so much of their deck so quickly, they could easily find Mountain Giant and play it for 4 mana. But for a long time, this was just about the only good Handlock support, until a new wave of cards that synergized with big hand sizes was released. Cards like Antheron and Goldshire Knoll offered even more giant, cheap threats. Encumbered Pack Mule added more filler cards to your hand, and Spice Breadbaker offered desperately needed healing for the deck. You see, Handlock is a very passive deck that does nothing for the first couple of turns and hopes to win by dropping multiple cheap threats before they die. A trend you might have noticed is that a lot of the best Warlock cards turn health into card or mana advantage, so they usually need very efficient ways of healing to offset that downside. Often the best answer to hand-style Warlock decks was to aggro them down before they could do anything 
or burst them down from 10 health, since that's the health total they needed to play Molten Giant for free. Spiced Bread Baker was the perfect solution to this problem, and shored up one of Handlock's few remaining weaknesses. And even though it hasn't had that much diversity in the type of decks it's been included in, Spice Bread Baker has seen play ever since its release, and has been quite meta-dominant at that. And at number 4, we have Drain Soul. This 2-mana Warlock spell deals 3 damage to a minion and has Lifesteal, a keyword which restores health to your hero equal to the damage it dealt. And despite how simple this card looks, it's very efficient at 2 mana and it still sees competitive play in Wild. For context, Frostbolt was the premier 2 mana removal spell that others were compared to. It dealt 3 damage, could target your opponent's face, and freeze the target if needed. And for a while, it was the best removal spell, since other classes' removal spells either couldn't target face or not as many benefits. At this point, Drain Soul had actually been in the game for a while, but did 2 damage instead of 3 and saw no play. This is until Blizzard decided to buff a whole bunch of old cards, which included Drain Soul. And just by increasing a single number on the card and making it deal 3 damage instead of 2, Blizzard made Drain Soul competitively viable overnight. It has seen play in pretty much every Control Warlock deck because of how good it is and how well it synergizes with other Warlock cards. Drain Soul has even been printed as a Priest card and still saw a ton of play even though Priests have already had other good healing options at their disposal. And even though Drain Soul can only target minions and has the potential to whiff on the healing effect if you're at full health, these drawbacks don't really matter. What made Frostbolt good was the potential to use it in combos to kill your opponent in one turn. What made Drain Soul significantly better was its ability to remove an opponent's minion, heal off the damage it dealt, and slow the game down enough for Warlock to get their win conditions. And at number 3, we have Eldrachi Warblades. This Demon Hunter card is a 3 mana 2 3 weapon with lifesteal meaning it heals your hero equal to the damage it dealt. While on the surface, this card seems bad, and maybe even weak compared to the other cards on this list, Warblade saw play in one of the most meta-dominant decks of all time. You see, Demon Hunter is a fairly new class in Hearthstone, being the 10th class release six years after launch. And because Blizzard really wanted to push Demon Hunter to be competitive as soon as it was released, Demon Hunter got possibly the most busted and synergistic set of cards we've ever seen. Some of the worst defenders were Battlefiend, an overstatted snowball monster, Priestess of Fury, a mini Ragnaros which could attack, Skull of Gul'dan, which was the best card draw of all time, and Altruius the Outcast, one of the best combo cards of all time. All of these cards and many, many more all came together to make Demon Hunter the best class at aggro, control, mid-range, combo, drawing, healing, and removal. And at its very peak, Odd Demon Hunter and Wild became an S-tier deck. In addition to all the previously mentioned broken cards, the main power of this deck came from its hero power, Demon's Bite, which gave your hero plus to attack for just one mana. It could easily win by turn 5 or clear your opponent's entire board with Warglaives and a hero power. Of course, all of that attacking had a downside, and that was all the damage your hero would take. Luckily, Demon Hunter had access to a 0 mana drain life at the time, and Alrachi Warblades, which when used with your hero power could heal your hero by 5 each time you attacked. This deck didn't last long though, but has since been a thorn in standard by enabling a lifesteal OTK with Ilganoth, where all of your lifesteal effects instead deal damage to your enemy's hero. And at number 2, we have Reno Jackson. This 6 mana 4 6 heals your hero to full health, but only if your deck has the only unique cards in it. That means if you have duplicate cards in your deck, by the time you play Reno, his effect won't go off. And as much as it pains me to say it, Reno isn't the number one spot on this list. Especially since this is what most veteran players first think of as the best card that can heal you. For Reno's entire lifetime, he has single-handedly stopped aggro from running rampant and being the best deck of the format. He is the namesake of his own deck format, is the bane of aggro decks, and is such a fan favorite that he's had a whole expansion gimmick centered around him. And to players confused as to why healing your hero to full health with such a severe limitation has been good for so long, it's because this is actually all you need to do to beat many aggro decks in Hearthstone. From a deck building perspective, an ideal aggro deck kills your opponent as quickly as possible, efficiently using all their mana, health, and cards to do so. In practice, that means aggro decks almost always run out of threats and burst quickly, if you're able to survive their initial onslaught. And even at 6 mana, which is near unplayable for any other card in Wild, he has had such a game deciding effect that it's actually worth trying to survive until 6 mana, hoping you can draw Reno, play him, and stabilize. And with other support and value cards, Reno decks have always been present as the premier control decks of Standard and Wild. So much so that aggro decks have been including counters just to stall Reno for a couple more turns. And if it weren't for how insanely broken the last card on this list is, Reno would have definitely been at number one. 
And at number one, we have Demon Seed. This Warlock questline first requires you to take six points of damage on your turn and deal six damage with life steal to your opponent when you complete it. Then, when you take another eight damage on your turn, it again deals three damage with life steal to your opponent. And finally, when you take another eight damage on your turn, you get Blightborn Tamsin as your reward, which is a five mana seven seven that redirects any damage you would take during your turn to your opponent instead. This card was great in Standard, but was truly disgusting during its short time in Wild. Yes, that's right. The Demon Seed was banned in Wild, and is one of only two cards that have been banned ever. What made this deck unstoppable was a critical mass of good cards which damage you, good healing cards, and card draw. You see, while you could use your other self-damaging cards to kill your opponent after you played Tamsin, the real strength of the deck came from redirecting any fatigue damage you would take during your turn. Fatigue is Hearthstone's version of decking out, where you draw a fatigue card that deals one more damage for each card you draw from an empty deck. So the first card you drew from an empty deck dealt one damage to your hero, the second would deal two damage, and so on and so on. And after a couple more, fatigue damage really starts to add up and will usually kill you after about 10 cards. So what Demon Seed decks would do is run Dark Lair, play all of their self-damaging cards for free, draw cards with self-damaging cards, play some Giants, and play Tamsin on turn 5. Then, for the rest of the game, they would life tap and draw as much as possible. And while it would be possible to nerf Demon Seed even harder into the ground to unban it, Tamsim's mechanic of redirecting fatigue damage meant the Demon Seed decks would inevitably win against any other control deck or combo deck, since they had infinite damage and wouldn't take fatigue damage themselves. Alright, and that's the list. Do you know of any other healing cards that should have definitely been on the list? Or have ideas for future videos just like this one? If so, I'd love to hear about either of those things down in the comments.